Joining me here in Studio A is the other candidate running for Congress in New Mexico District 3, Sharon Klasha Schillage is here with me this morning, and I appreciate you coming in. And welcome to KSJE. It's good to see you. You bet. Thank you very much. I appreciate the invitation. You bet. You bet. How's the campaign going? Oh, my gosh. It is. Um, it's a whole new world in the, in the field of campaigning. Right. Um, you have different ways of having to transcend, I guess, from the, the like we were talking, the yeah. way of campaigning right. to a new way. You're still and shaking hands and kissing babies, oh, but there's a whole absolutely. new way to do that, too. <laughs> absolutely. Right? But there are some things that just um, aren't working that well anymore because of the social media and sure. everything. Yeah. And I'm learning because I've been in two cycles of campaigning to where um, there was really a lot of work made. In, made. I mean, uh, I mean, we had to make contact with people. Right. Connect with people. Now, you do ads, put, flash them out, and you can get. You connect with thirteen thousand, eight thousand people at a time, six thousand through social media or yes, something else like yes, that. Right. Uh -huh, and it's pretty so, instant. Yeah. So it's. Um, I feel like the campaign's going real well. We're. Um, We've gone to the east side of the campaign, uh, the southeastern side of the state. Right. And we've been working Navajo, and we're starting to work the northern part. Mm -hmm. And my gosh, so many similarities, yet so many differences. Right. I want to ask you about that, too, yeah. because District 3 is a big district, as you've been describing, right? It, it goes all the way from here in the northwest corner to the northeast corner of New Mexico and then way south mm -hmm. on the eastern side of, yeah. of New Mexico, almost to the southern state line, right. but not, not quite. And so right. it's a pretty big geographic area to, to cover. Absolutely. Putting a lot of miles on your vehicle, Oh, my gosh. Like. In fact, round trip from where I live yeah. to Artesia... Which is still District 3. Yes, which is still District 3. It's um, a round trip. Yeah. That's like halfway to Washington, D.C. Oh, my goodness. I know. How about Isn't that? Isn't that amazing? That is and amazing. And that's just in-state. Right, I right. mean, we haven't even gone out. We're just that's in true. state. Very so true. So that shows how vast. Right. So what are you hearing from, from the voters that you're visiting with? Are they oh concerned about God. jobs and the economy? I know that's one um, of the things you're very... Um, it's part of your campaign, part of your platform. Well, first of all, in my district, what really has helped me mm -hmm. is a redistricting. Mm. Because um, I acquired the Permian Basin. Right. And so we have two basins that support the state budget. We have the Permian Basin, which is um, mainly oil. Mm -hmm. Then we have San Juan Basin, which is right where here. we are. Right. And that's natural gas, oil, minerals. Um, we have uranium, we have um, um, helium, mm -hmm. and so we have that, and th the taxes collected from those two basins, wow, supports right. over half of the state budget. Right. So I have a very rich um, district, mm -hmm. however... A lot of the people on the southeastern side are still getting used to the fact they're in District 3 because they've, they've always been in District 2. Right. That's a change. So, yeah, that's mm -hmm. a big change mm -hmm. for them. They love their their um, rep, mm -hmm. congressional rep, Yvette Carroll, and they're still trying to get used to the fact that She's District 2, and I'm I'm the one. They're, they've been moved into a new district, basically. They, they didn't have, really do anything except have, the, the lines moved. Like I have Roswell. Mm -hmm. That has been split into three sections, Interesting. one, two, and three. Okay. And I think Hobbs has been kind of two, two sections. Gotcha. Two districts. Right. And so you look at that, and what the people are saying is, um, you know, our concern is when we talk about all the issues yes. being um, well circulating nationally and then within our state a lot of the people are saying that they're just concerned about the money they get and they're concerned that they have enough money to put food on the table and then get ready for the next cycle ah. and so they were saying any issues aside from from their intake, money mm -hmm. intake, is frill, is um, fluff, so to speak. Right. And so, I mean, that kind of tells you a lot about 
what is going on in District 3. We It's rural. Yeah. A lot of it is rural. And we have people who are just trying to survive, people who, are, and, and I've heard their stories. Um, we have people, you know, on Navajo, and then I see a lot of the same similarities throughout the state. They're, they're, everyone is concerned about survival, you know, making it to the next time, next paycheck. Lots of paycheck to paycheck yeah, living, paycheck you're saying? paycheck to paycheck living. Mm. Um, you know, you hear a lot about that nationally, but then when you actually hear it, see it, and and then when people are asked, well, what do you think about um, electric cars? They're like, I don't know. I'm concerned about getting food on my table. It's not in their in yeah. their radar, I guess, right. right? Right. And then what do you think about insurance? And their their concern is, I can't afford it. Mm. So health insurance or all kinds yeah, of insurance. Health insurance. That's the all main one. All kinds of insurance. Okay, yeah. got it. Uh-huh. So what can what can be done? Do you think what what can the Congress do to help these folks who are living paycheck to paycheck? I mean, that's I guess well, the question, isn't it? I think for first of all, Congress needs to look at the overreaching with regulations, because the regulations really hurts our businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, it hurts their ability to survive. I mean, we saw a lot of the downfall of businesses during COVID. Um, that the and our plants closed because our plants right uh-huh. because they couldn't afford what over-regulating was telling them to do. So they had to close. Um, That is an area that is very, very important. It affects um, the businesses. It affects them supplying the demand. And we need to look at the demand. I mean, the demand, the people who are demanding this are people who are, like I mentioned, survivors. So I think we need to look at the over-regulating We need to look at the tax base. I mean, New Mexico has a stack. I mean, we've been adding and adding and adding and adding. And then to the point where the incentives that are given for for taxes, for companies, new companies coming in, really doesn't balance out very well because by the time they get into the state, get the business going, look at all that they have, all the requirements that they have to meet. So... The incentives really didn't work well for them. Right. So, I see. to me, the taxes and the overregulating is what we really need to look at because that is the umbrella over everything else. Um, so that's a real concern of mine. That's to me the beginning of working towards chipping away at helping the economy. Okay. Okay. I know education is also a big um, part of your campaign too and when we talk about education you've served for a bit here in new mexico yes. with the public education department if i'm mm-hmm. not mistaken yes i'm 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 a commissioner you're now. a commissioner on yeah. that board right and so um what can be done at the at the federal level then congressionally right you're running for congress to help um the ped here in new mexico maybe because i think folks get frustrated with our schools and how our students are doing yes um there's a lot of frustration and i think the frustration um, that we're seeing are, oh my gosh, widespread. I mean, I see so much. Um, again, you look at the overregulating there. It's it's um, they are stacked. The teachers are really stacked with the requirements. When I taught, I was in the classroom a lot, and we did not have to do three fourths of what the teachers have to do now. And I'm really concerned about the unions, um, the teachers' unions, um, the requirements that they are asking and demanding upon, like the state. A lot of times they're not very realistic. And so I think that's hurting our educational system as well. What so types I, of things are they asking for Well, you that know, you're concerned about? Okay, okay, let's look at the administering mm-hmm. of that takes place within the schools. Mm-hmm. To me, <coughs> excuse me. To me, that is out of their realm. Um, that is up to the principals, the superintendent, the board. And again, that's overreaching. I mean, it's like. Uh, so that's who should be saying oh, what's yeah. going on, not the union. Right, not the union. Okay. And um, case in point, the calendar. Remember, there school was school calendar, yes, right? There, there was a lot of um, discussion about that. Well, 
and come on, let's uh, look at your jurisdiction, so to speak, or let's look at your boundaries. And let's everyone stay in their own lane. And that's kind of what I see. Um, people are going into to different lanes, and as a result, what else I see is we're not following what is in place in terms of um, procedures. Procedures aren't being adhered to. Um, policies are looked at maybe in a lot of instances too much. Mm -hmm. And the, I guess, how to implement is scrutinized to the, to the point where it's almost ridiculous. It doesn't fit what the policy is actually saying. So those are some of the things I see, and I think at the federal level, I'm gonna have to really look at legislation to see what the real intent is. And I know what New Mexico needs, what New Mexico wants, and if it doesn't fall in line with that, then that's my responsibility to to get that realigned. Right. So that's kind of what I see. I mean, it's, okay. a, it's a broad area, but you know, that's what, I feel I have to look at. Right. Are you supportive of the Federal Department of Education? Um, I, I'm not supportive of where they're ta they have taken us, mm. have taken us. Mm -hmm. I'm watching to make sure that we're reading everything correctly, listening to the teachers, and really building all of that in because there's a tendency to make too many decisions for our school districts that don't relate to the community, that don't relate to what the community needs and wants. Like, um, we can't be pushing everyone to colleges. I mean, look at San Juan College. Look at your curriculum. Mm -hmm. This San Juan College really addresses the college bound as well as the trade bound. And I think that's a very good balance. And that's what we have to look at schools. I mean, colleges are experiencing the same thing where a lot of the colleges are empty now. True. You know, they can't fill them. Right. Because a lot of students are looking at the fact that they don't want to go to school. They want an alternative. So right. that's kind of where right. that is. And it seems like there are paths for those students that just want to maybe graduate from high school and learn some skills and get in, start working. Exactly. Or go into the military or something else. Right. Lots of other right. choices that they may have. Right. And okay. it's not necessarily college. Right. Yeah. As much as it pains me to say it, working for I, Sam I, on college, but I hear you. Not. But it's not me for everybody. Too. It's not me for everybody. Too. When we understand each other, that's true. Um, Ms. Glasser-Shillage, I want to ask you too a little bit. You mentioned the power plants, and certainly those are those are nice, mm -hmm. high-paying jobs that yeah. are disappearing um, as a power plant closes down. Everyone is kind of looking at the other plant, which um, is um, operated majority by Arizona Public Service, of mm -hmm. course, in this area anyway. And you know, maybe 2032 is a, is a right. year that gets bounced. Right. Right. bounced around as a possible uh -huh. time for it to close down. So what could replace those jobs, I guess? Is there a room for Ooh. a federal jobs program that might help areas like San Juan County to replace some of those high-paying jobs? Or um, I, This is something, you know, we've all been looking at long and hard and trying to figure out how we recuperate, I guess, from all of this. In talking to a lot of them, in fact, just this weekend, I was talking to a lot of the former workers of the plants, and they're angry. They're angry that they have to leave their family. Um, this has really separated families. And a decision was made on the community's behalf that this is the best route to go, but never, no one ever really stopped and thought, thought about the people mm -hmm. who would be impacted. Instead, the politics, the political agenda was more important than the people who, were, who would be affected. This, um, a couple of the guys that I was talking were saying, this is really crazy because they were saying that they could have continued working because it isn't like we were running out of coal or we were running out of oil. It's all there. If there's a good reserve and it's there for us to use. They didn't understand why we were going into these um, alternatives. Um, and so I, I asked them the same question. Mm -hmm. So what do you think we should do? And they were saying, legislate. Legislate and educate Congress, 
to get them to understand that we do need to drill. We do need, I mean, we need that um, globally. This isn't just a community issue or a state issue. It's a global issue to where a lot of the international companies rely on what goes on in the Permian Basin in different areas and San Juan Basin, even though um, the natural gas is low. I mean, the cost. The price, right. Uh, mm -hmm. The price is low. Mm -hmm. So they were saying that, number one, if we could restart everything, but I was saying we just tore down a plant. Right. We just tore down a plant. And so they were saying we still could do something about it. I mean, so that's okay. that's one idea. Another okay. idea is, uh, um, I mean, they're looking at, um, we're looking at um, what to do with natural gas, what to do with helium, what to do with um, some of the plants we, I mean, not plants, but the, the drills that we have out. I don't even know what you, um, anyway, mm -hmm. the, those are some of the areas okay. that um, people are looking at. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Very interesting. Well, and I know there was some money that was given to those workers to help them with retraining, and there was money that was available. Um, but again, maybe they felt it wasn't enough, or, or well, just the what, they weren't part of that decision-making process yeah. either. The main thing was that a lot of, I asked the same question, uh -huh. a lot of them said, Me, go, I, I'd like to see whoever made these decisions going back to school. Right. I, I'm not going to go back to school, is what they were saying. I see. They were After saying, a career, yeah, a, a long I, career. And training. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do I need to be trained in? I could train them. You know, I mean, this is... Sure, I see. Yeah. So, gotcha. They're so, angry. Yeah, they're angry. Yeah. They're really angry. Um, and the we've had, like I said, the big thing is families. <clears throat> families have been split up. Right. Yeah. That's always sad to see. Yeah. I understand. Well, Sharon Klosha Schillage, I'm afraid we're out of time, but we wanted to sit down and talk with you and hear a little bit about your thoughts. I know you've got many more opinions and, and your yeah. campaign is covering a lot more topics. If folks want to find out more about your campaign, they can go online. Yes, to Sharon, F-O-R-N-M dot com. And that will give them a lot of information about me. And that will open them up to just a slew of information. So, okay. Yeah. Very uh -huh. good. Thank you very much. It's Sharon Klasha Schillage, Republican, running for Congress in District 3 that covers yes. all of San Juan County. I appreciate your time this morning. Well, thank you. I appreciate this. Thank you very right. much. Uh-huh.